Good day guys, Austin here and in this tutorial today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up um, well I suppose it depends what country you're from but it's either Genesis, Mega Drive or the other version, the Japanese version of Mega Drive it's all the same system just obviously different games released in different countries and some people like to call it different names uh, in my version of it I would be called it the Mega Drive because that's what it was called in the UK However, I do understand that in the US it was called Genesis. So, my apologies if I call it something that you're not used to, but it's basically all the same system. And the way I'm going to set this up for you today will mean that you can play any games from any region and you'll be good to go. So, well, let's get stuck in. If you've watched the previous video, uh, or one of the previous videos, which was the RetroArch setup, you would see I brushed upon the actual setup of the Mega Drive. That was basically just to give it a test, just to make sure it was running, and to give you a heads up on how to change some of the settings within the games or systems to make it run the way that you want to. So today we're going to be setting it up properly. I'm going to give you, as always, all the bits and bobs that you need, as in the artwork and I don't know, I think I'll throw in a database if there's not one in there already. And we'll go through the complete setup from start to finish, including hopefully the actual running of the games, the themes, the boxes, the carts, um, make it all fit together and be the way it's supposed to be presented. We'll go through the fade screens and I think I'll show you the bezels as well. Um, all this should be included in the pack. Uh, Right now, go to the download bit in the description below. There, as always, there will be a mega link. That will give you all the, uh, I suppose, bits and bobs that we're going to go through today and what you will need in order for you to set it up as I'm going to now. Okay then, so, as I said, go to your mega link down below. Uh, that should bring you to obviously the Megalink site it will give you a download, download that and that should hopefully go to your desktop there on your desktop you'll see a 446 megabyte uh, 7-zip or compressed file named Sega Genesis uh, obviously decompress that as always open it up and you will be greeted with this we'll go through this in detail as we're actually setting it up because we'll have to place all these folders where it's supposed to be I'll do this as it is and then we can have a look at what I've actually given you but for now we're going to concentrate on the actual setup of the Genesis and making sure that it works in Hyper Launch or Rocket Launcher as it's now called I believe so first off let's take ourselves over to the uh, actual setup that we've made so mine again as always D drive Hyperspin folder, and here we go. Here's our setup that we've been uh, making our way along with. So I'm opening up Hyperlaunch HQ. Give it a second for it to load, and here we go. Hyperlaunch HQ all set up. There's the systems that we got down the left hand pane. As always, I always say this was probably, but these are the systems that are enabled in default. That doesn't mean that they are working. Obviously, we haven't pointed anything towards any of these apart from at this moment in time we've got MAME working. Uh, we will get a few of the other MAME ish ones going on, but for now I just want to concentrate and get a few of these systems up and running. So, in today's one, we're going to be looking at the Genesis. So, there you go, Genesis is already enabled, so we, there's no messing around that we have to do to get the system put onto actually hyperlaunch. In this case, it's enabled by default, so everybody should have that in the left hand pane. Now what we want to do, if we haven't done this already, but let's just make sure anyway. Left on pane, ensure that Genesis is working. Okay, now you should have had RetroArch already set up, because that's what we're going to choose on this one. So make sure that's selected. Go over to the emulators, and as you can see in this instance, we have got it set up. But just in case you haven't, you need to make sure that this ROM path here obviously points towards the wherever your games are, to be honest. Okay default emulator again we're going to be using RetroArch so ensure that when you click on this uh, magnifying glass you choose RetroArch uh, you could use any one you wish to be honest but the way I'm working it today is I'm going to be running it through RetroArch if you haven't seen it make sure you look at my tutorial and how to set it up and then below sing it on the same hymn sheet that is it basically there's nothing else to set up in this tab the only thing left to make sure if you haven't done so already is all my games are compressed in other words the 7 zipped 
and I need to tell Hyper Launch that. So, in other words, what it's going to do is, as I click on a game to launch, it's going to unzip the file and then launch the unzipped file. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, what that does is it saves hard drive space, to be honest. Um, if you've got uh, a cartridge, it's a couple of megs maximum, if that. Um, which isn't too bad, you're not going to fill much space. However, if you times that by a hundred or so, uh, times that by a thousand on some systems, and then you times it by the amount of systems that you have, then you're going to start to fill up space quite considerably and very quick. So, I like to compress mine anyway. I also like the fade screen when I'm actually launching a game to give me a bit of information about the game, and it looks more presentable to fade in and fade out. So, to be honest, the decompression or the uncompression, whatever you call it, uh, of actually getting the game to launch it doesn't affect it anyway because the fade screen is up why it's doing it in the first place anyway. So, you know, it's, it's your prerogative, you can choose either way, but make sure that you either got it uh, unzipped or zipped, depending on if your ROMs are actually, or games should I say, are actually zipped or unzipped. So, in other words, if you get a black screen and it's not working, either do it to false or true, depending on which it was, vice versa. Okay, so th at that stage you should be running. If not, give me a PM or anything like that. It's usually a, a simple tinkle if you've got it all set up. However, do ensure you do it through my guide because there's so many different variations of uh, RetroArch and things like that that I couldn't help everybody. I needed some kind of starting block <laughs> to know where, what stage you're at at this time. Okay then, so enough of my waffling again. Let's get stuck in. So. We know that the Mega Drive is set up in um, Hyperlaunch. We've told it where the ROMs are. We've told it what emulator we're going. We've told it that we need to 7-zip. In some cases, we would then have to go into the module and actually tell RetroArch what core we're going to be using. Now, in, when I say core, what I'm talking about is if you've had experience with the MESS setup or any other system, in most of the normal emulators it runs one system so let's say for example Wii Wii uses the Dolphin emulator uh, it's probably a bad one to choose that one to be honest because it runs two it runs GameCube as well <laughs> um, PCSX2 runs PlayStation 2 um, very good emulator it's not as good as it can be, but to be honest, it's the only one out there, and it does play games pretty damn well, considering how advanced they are and the amount of power it takes. Um, now, that's a simple one, because it's one emulator for one system. It runs one kind of game, if you get what I mean. Um, the thing is, when with RetroArch and MESS, is that MESS runs so many different systems, but it's one program. So what it does is it takes uh, like BIOSes or setups for each system and it runs it through that. Now RetroArch is almost identical the way it does it, it just calls it a different thing. So what you've kind of got is got an emulator within the emulator. So what it calls it is cores. Each core represents a system. And sometimes the system's cores uh, are actually familiar to the name of the system. Like, um, I don't know, I think the Genesis core is also called Genesis something else. Uh, and along them lines. Some of them are completely random. Now, RetroArch when it first came out, compatibility was a bit dodgy and the actual setup within Hyperlaunch was a bit dodgy because it, no one had much experience of it. So you had to actually go into the module and tell which core you wanted it to launch. Now, because it's been out for a while, people have got onto it and they've actually figured out that, hang on a minute, RetroArch is pretty damn good at it and we can sort out a lot of systems with this one emulator. So what they've done is they've tweaked the module and now by default on, I'd say, 90% of the systems, unless you have any issues with them, when you launch a game uh, with RetroArch through Hyperlaunch HQ, it will actually pick the default module for you. In other words, it will pick the best... Um, core to run the game and in my experience it's worked so far I've not had to do any changes I think up to now however as I start to add more complicated systems onto the I'm sure I will have to do a bit of tweaking but in this instance no you won't have to but just in case anyway I'm going to show you how to do it it's just a 
quick two seconds look so what I'm doing here I've got onto the modules tab I'm in the Genesis modules tab and here is some options at the top over here you can look at the module notes so that will tell you all about RetroArch now be aware this isn't just telling you about Genesis this is telling you about all the systems that RetroArch goes through and I'll probably give you more information about the actual cores and things like that than I can give you because I just tend to waffle on to be honest <laughs> Um, over here you can edit the module, you don't want to be messing around with that, not unless you know what you're doing um, open the module folder, no need to do that and here are the two that if you're playing with modules you will probably be looking at now in most cases you press this one and this will open it up um, like this to be honest and here you've got the overall settings for let's say RetroArch so this plays with the actual RetroArch setup itself. Now, if you was to go onto these tabs at the top, then you can open up. This is the settings for RetroArch in general. This one is network play. I've never played with this, so I couldn't tell you anything to do with any of this stuff. Now, if you go into this tab, Sega Genesis, this is the actual setup of the Sega Genesis. Now, there's not much to play with at the moment. Um, we may have to go in there if it's bezels. No, no, because it should work as general. All my configs are set up to run quite well. Up here, it, depending on what system you're setting up, you may need to tell it what core to run. You know, if we have an issue that it won't run with the Genesis core, then we may need to tell it to run using a, a different core. But like I said, the guys over at Rocket Launcher or Hyper Launch, whatever it's called now, um, they have gone through this module and they've chosen the best ones through trial and error hundreds of people using this all the time they write in saying what they would like and over time it's it's been chosen that certain cores are better for certain systems okay so I'm not going to play with anything around here because we've already tested it before we know it works by default so no why over complicate things and sometimes when you're going through them this one also opens up to give you further options in this case obviously as you can see it doesn't okay so that's a quick overview of modules again we don't need to mess around with that in here now if I was to click on the games one obviously you can't see anything but if I was to choose the little blue one here audit all games for the system it would pull the database that's already installed in hyperspin and compare it to all the games that I have in the ROM folder that I've told it about so there you go it's compared all the information it's got four games that's in the database I'll show you that in a second and it's compared it to all the ROMs that's in the folders now this is the database that actually comes with Hyperspin I think I don't think I've edited this one so it's not complete I think it's just the uh, US Europe and did we got any Japanese games in here? I don't think we have no it's just the best of because I think I've got a database and it's got something like uh, 800 and something games maybe I can't remember the top of my head so I'll have a look at that after this video completes and if it is doable or if I think that it ain't due in any way then I will give you a different database to also download that and if it is there it will be in the download section down below in the description if not then we're all stuck with this but you've all got it anyway and as you can see on a standard download you get all these games anyway from wherever you get games from <laughs> Uh, again I'm waffling on but there you go I've audited it so it's working so up to now everything is tickety-boo and we're all ready to roll so if I was to choose one of these games and uh, let's th find one that I actually know maybe uh, Art of Fighting there we go it's quite an old one it's probably nothing like the arcade version so I'm going to click on that one and then I press a little rocket tab here and it should launch the game now it may be loud so I'm not going to talk over it, if it is loud then I'm just going to uh, exit out. So let's launch that. We haven't set up the phase. Loading game. We haven't set up the phase so it will be loud this point. Loading complete. We'll make that look better in a second. But as you can see the game is launching. So yes, we know RetroArch is good, it's over to one side, it's doing a head in, but I know that it's working. <laughs> it's this one where the girl starts crying at the beginning. I think on the arcade one, she starts whinging in a corner when she's been abducted. Brother! Anyway, 
<laughs> they stuck in. Uh, so we right, we know it works. We know hyper launch is uh, all tickety boo and going for it. So that's good. Now what we're going to do is make it actually look good. Because <laughs> at this moment, if I was to say, oh, let's have a game of our fighting, someone's got to load that up and think, hang on a minute, that looks like shit. Because it's over to one side of the screen. You've not got it running in hyperspin. There's no artwork. So that's dog shit. So let's not make it dog shit. Let's sort it all out. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to make it run in hyperspin. So first off, I will need to make sure that everything is nice looking in hyperspin, ready to go. At this moment in time, if I was to look at the um, what's it called, the themes in hyperspin, there'll be no art apart from maybe one wheel, one video, and the themes will be for the normal ratio monitor. So let's have a look. We'll load it up. Sorry if it's loud, but we're having a look at the what would come with hyperspin as default. Okay, so this is what we've already got on here. As you can see, we changed all the wheels for the widescreen version. I've got the Mega Drive wheel because I'm a Mega Drive user. But as you can see, there's a Genesis theme, but it's stretched because it's not supposed to be on a widescreen monitor. So let's sort that out. Let's actually turn it into a widescreen monitor. Obviously, if you haven't got widescreen, then you can keep it as it is. And also, looking into the actual system, the boxes look like dog shit. Well, they're just 2D. Uh, and it's hurting my eyes to be honest, actually looking at this. Everything's a big mess. So let's sort that shit out. So, exit out. On the actual wheel where it says Mega Drive also, if you... Oh, I'll show you how to do this now. Right. So, let's sort this out. First off, the main wheel in the main system. If you go into, here's your root of the hyperspin folder, here's your media. If you go into main menu in your media folder, this is the kind of system menu. Um, the main one that you scroll up and down to choose what system you want to play, Mega Drive, Master System, all that kind of stuff. So everything in here is for that kind of stuff. So first off, the wheel. I've got mine named Mega Drive. That's because I'm UK, so I recognize Mega Drive more than uh, Genesis, but you can change that however you want. I think there's different variations for it. So I've gone into Media, Main Menu, now if I go into Images and then Wheel, here's the actual wheel that we're scrolling through to pick which system. Now, as you can see, I've enabled uh, Mega Drive. So where's Mega Drive, Mega Drive, Mega Drive? Oh, sorry, it'd be called Genesis, won't it? So it'd be S Sega Genesis. There we go. So, you see, even though that's a picture of Mega Drive, the system knows it. Everything has to match basically the system name. So, whatever's in your um, Hyper Launch name in the side here, wherever's that named, it has to match the system itself. So, even though the picture's of a Mega Drive one, it's named Sega Genesis, so it loads when Sega Genesis. So, it's kind of fueling it into saying, yeah, this is Sega Genesis, just load it anyway. Now, if you are a US user, or if you want the actual Genesis name of it, then all you need to do is rename this Sega Genesis, in other words, take the one away, and then rename that to something else. So it loads that version instead of that version. Uh, it sounds more complicated than it is, but that's how you do it anyway. Right, so that's the main menu sorted out. Now we need to look at the theming. The theme at this moment in time is normal theme, and in other words, normal ratio, 4 by 3 so I'm going to turn this into a widescreen 16 by 9 the way we do this is to go into themes and there's all our themes that we've got at this moment in time system themes that is so we've got our download, we've unzipped it and this is what I've given you right first off then I need to replace the Sega Genesis theme so go into themes and there it is Sega Genesis I just drag that over to where that one is yeah that's when I want to overwrite it yes replace the one in the destination and there we go now that should have been the wheel and the system theme sorted so again I'm gonna come out of there there's no need to change anything in here now from the top of my head we've got the video already in there we've got the theme and we've got the wheel okay so now we actually have to go in and sort the actual system stuff out so there's Sega Genesis get into there Right, now we've we've sorted the main system wheel, we've sorted the main system theme, now we've got actually gone into the system and now we're going to sort out the game kind of stuff. 
So what we've got is, uh, first off, we'll change the theme within there. As you can see before, it was hurting my eyes. So we'll drag the default this one this time into this one, which will give us that. Replace again. So that's all the theme sorted now. Our theme should all be widescreen when we load it back up in a second. Um, now we'll go into the images. And the images of the download that I've given you. And as you can see, the I've got Artwork 3 and Artwork 4. Obviously, these correspond to these folders, Artwork 3 and Artwork 4. If we go into these, it should have, I think, one wheel, uh, sorry, one box and something else. Yeah, so it's saying place box art here and that one. Oh, it's empty anyway. But the way I've set up my theme is that basically if I was to choose these two from the downloads, paste that into where the actual setups are, so three and four. And there we go, everything's transforming now. Yes, I want to replace because the other one was a 2D version. So now when I go in there, I've now got all the car art. And as you can see, it's specific to each system. It looks squashed on here because it's compressed so that when it goes to widescreen, it looks the size that it should be. And there we go with the box art. Again, nice 3D version. And it's all compressed and looks a bit wonky in here because it's compressed so when it shows in widescreen it shows the way it should be and okay whilst we're in here do we need to set anything else up uh, other yes we'll sort the pointer out so I'll drag that over yes replace the one in destination um, special yeah we got the nice special ones at the bottom that show our controller layout rather than the actual arcadey stuff so I'll go delete those and put those in of course you don't have to do this if you've got an arcade set up this is just 360 controllers um, the wheel itself did I include? yes thank god for that and as you can see again I've put nice borders on all these and I've also um, compress them so they will show uh, a widescreen version. Right, so I'm gonna copy all of those. You could probably just drag the folder over, but I've got the hot, I've got the long way around here. And they should ask me, do I want to overwrite that one that's already in there? Yes, I do. And there we go, the complete wheels for it. Okay, so I think the only thing left now. Oh yeah, the letters and the genre. And then I think we're done in this section. So letters, genre, and letters. I need to overwrite those. Obviously, I didn't write that one properly because this is a this is more PAL version. These letters, um, the ones that's on HyperSync are more Genesis version. The the way things are written. Obviously this looks more PAL to me, so I like these letters. However, the ones that are on HyperSync, when you download those, those are more uh, Genesis looking. So, you know, if you're setting up for a Mega Drive or PAL version, then maybe use mine. Or if you're going for Genesis, use the ones on the HyperSync version. It's your prerogative at the end of the day, whichever look nice for you. I just give you these options, to be honest. And there we go. We should now have everything set up, kind of, in HyperSpin. So now when I is to come right out of here, back to the actual hyperspin setup and load this. You should be able to see all the changes that we've just made. So let's just boot it up. Apologies if it's a little loud. So there you go. There's our Genesis, it's now in widescreen as it's supposed to look. It looks a lot better than what it did do, all stretched out. Um, we've got our box art all synced up. As we roll through though, we will have bad sound effects, we'll have no videos, and the text for each game will be <laughs> it'll be looking bad. But that's what we're about to go and fix now. So, as you can see, it's looking good. We've got all the box art all synced up. All the wheel apps, all good to go.
carts at the side it's where it's supposed to be we've got nice boxes nice carts now let's clean up and get this finished right so let's exit out okay uh, next phase for this one would be then to set up hypersync so let's have a look where we've gone for that so we go into the hypersync cloud actually load up hypersync I think I've just loaded the wrong one yeah <laughs> uh, click on the hypersync loader, not the actual cloud. It's making sure that I've got all the bits and bobs needed. Come on, it takes forever this thing. Okay, and there's our little sound effects of approval. Uh, hopefully this time we won't need to update hypersync. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see I'm logged in, there's a the thing, if you're unsure how to use this, have a look at my tutorial on how hypersync, it's pretty box standard but on there I give a few views as to pros and cons for actually using this. So let's do this anyway, what we'll actually need to sync up. Uh, there's not much, so let's have a look. As I talked about on the previous videos, this is synced up from my older system, so I've got all the different configurations on here. But we need to make sure that I'm getting the art that I need and nothing else that I don't want for the system I'm about to put in. So here we are. I've just clicked on Sega Genesis. That's brought us up a sign to Sega Genesis, so I know that works correct. It's brought up a list of my games in this pane here. So what I want to do is actually set up. Um, the bits that I want. So at this moment in time it's set to not sync up anything. Um, I definitely don't want box art because I've just put the boxes that I want in there. I don't want the cart art. I don't want the uh, theme because I've got that wheel art I've just added. <laughs> the dog's now snoring next to me. <laughs> and dreaming. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll carry on. I don't know if you could hear that one. Um, themes. No, don't want any of that. I don't want basically any of this because I've just put all better shit into the folders. So I don't want any of that. Literally, the only thing I think I want from here is the actual videos itself. So I've told it to sync videos. Um, I don't want the main menu theme. And that's it, basically. Pretty box standard and easy. Right, so. Oh, let's have a look in case you're using the Genesis version. You may want to use the letters that's on here. Let's have a look, see what we've got. See if they're any good. Yeah, basically they suit the Genesis setup more than the Mega Drive. Mine's a Mega Drive setup, so I'm going to keep it as that. But, you know, feel free to download those as well if you want, if they're better than the ones you want. They will suit the Genesis theme more than the Mega Drive. Your prerogative. Um, okay, so I'm happy with all that. I'm not syncing anything apart from videos, so close out of there. Go over to my sync. I'm choosing the Sega Genesis. I don't need it to check all media because I know that the only thing that I want is the videos. Obviously, if you want the letters also, then it's probably easy to do all media. Okay, Sega Genesis, game videos, begin sync. And there we go. It's now going over to MU Movies. It's finding all the videos for it. It's downloaded them into my um, setup. And I can leave that running in the background while I carry on. Okay. So, next phase. Um, I know that everything looks good. And it's set up how I want it. Now I want to do a bit of tweaking. So, first off, I want it to sync with what I've actually got. So, I need to come out of here. I want to set up the actual hyperspin side of it. I know the games work, I know it all looks good overall, but I want it to sync properly with the games I've got. I want it to look and feel the way I want it. So I'm just going to make some little tweaks here. So Hyper HQ, open up this, go to wheels, or wheel settings, choose a wheel. I want to set up the Sega Genesis, boom, there we go. Right, at the moment it's loading up every ROM that I've got. Um, what I want to do is to make it look clean and I don't want any, any errors or anything like that so I want to do some tweaking so first off I want to tell it where my games are so this is me telling Hyperspin where all my games are so when it loads things up it it knows exactly what games are in my thing so it will only show the games that are 
active or that I own or that I've got in my folder. So first off, I need to tell it where it is. I know I've got the entire collection anyway, but in case I change my database, I need to do this. So if there's any games that's not in my folder that's on the database or vice versa, it won't be showing anything bad. So hyperspin ROMs. Tell it where it is. Sega. Where is it? Sega Mega Drive Genesis. There we go. So I've just told it where all my games are. I don't want any parameters, but I do want to tell it what extensions there are because it will only look for games with those extensions. So I know that they're all zips, so I can't remember which format, but I'll play it safe and just put them all. So I'll put 7-zip, which I believe they are anyway. I'll also put RAR, and I'll also put zip files. So that should then pick them all up. doesn't matter if there's any extras in there that you add, but when you're writing these in, make sure you put no spaces and a comma to separate. So I know the end of each file. Um, which are all compressed, I know this, so it'll either be 7-zip, RAR or ZIP. If yours aren't, and yours are some kind of file type, I'll tell you what, just to clear this up, let's have a quick look. So yours might not be compressed. Um, ROM drive, they're not in there. ROMs, um, Sega, Genesis, right, there you are open this up. So I, I know that all mine here are all 7 zips. They're all compressed. However yours may not be compressed. So the way to find that out is to open the file and there you go. It seems to have an extension of MD. So I could add that if I wanted to but there's no need. So make sure you check a few because sometimes when you get sets or if you're um, dumping them from your games <laughs> then you may give them a different extension but it seems that all these are MD anyway okay so just for chits and giggles I'm also going to add this one to it MD just in case so straight after that last extension I'm going to put comma no space MD and there we go now I've got now it will pick up everything that's inside that drive they're all 7-zip I've just checked that anyway but I've just added these just in case anything changes Okay, so that's that bit set up. You don't need to worry about anything else. All this should be set up as standard pretty good. Okay, now I want to set up the look of the actual wheel. So, what I want here is, I, because I know I've got box art, I don't want to see any of the wheel when the wheel stops. So I'll bring that all the way down to zero. I also don't want the curved wheel, I want the straight wheel. So I'm going to change that to vertical. Normal is a curved, vertical is straight up and down. Um, large, I do want it to be large, I want it to be 400 and I like this to be a little bit small so I'm going to change that to 230 so the the big wheels, the wheel that's uh, in the center, the one that we're focusing on is 400 pixels wide and the smaller one is 230 pixels wide so the one that's in the middle which will be here is 400 and the rest will be 230 wide so it gives a bit more difference and they just seem to fit a little better when you're going up and down the screen. You can have a fiddle, personal taste at the end of the day, whatever you want. Okay, the rest of it shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to worry about. The pointer is as big as a pointer is. Normally you can't see it anyway, it's overwritten by the actual wheel in my setups. Um, but you can play around with that if you want. A horizontal wheel, you can tell it how uh, high, low, blah de blah, move it around. But I like everything as standard. Um, so that's, if you want to save it as my setup, that's how I like it. You don't have to mess around with any of these in here because we'll do that in a second anyway. And you won't have wheel text because we've got actual wheels, so you won't see that. So next stage then, we'll click on the navigation tab at the top. Right, this is where we start getting a bit more detailed. Okay, I want it to only show me the games which have ROMs. So if I own the game, I want it to show the wheel for it. If I don't have the ROM or the game, then I don't want to see it. So by ticking that, it's doing it. Okay, parents only, don't have to worry about that, that's more for main because there's lots of different variations for each game. Um, don't have to worry about that one. But I do want to show wheels only, so if I don't have a wheel for it, I don't want to see it because it looks ugly. I'd rather not play the game, but I'd rather have it look good, so I'm clicking that one. And themes only, don't have to worry about that. Okay, next stage up here, uh, wheel entrance options. So I want it, when I click on to that system so I've chosen Mega Drive or Genesis it then shows me a list of games it starts off return to last game that's one I tick so whichever one I exited out of the last one I was playing 
it the next time I go into that system, it will go straight to that game. It means that <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't start from the first one again. So by clicking that one, it's telling me, yep, I want to go to that game and when I exit out. So I'm not constantly starting from the beginning. Uh, you can also do start from a random game, or if you leave these completely unticked, as I said, it will start from the beginning every time. But it means that you don't see a lot of your things because you can never scroll all the way through to the end or the middle. So, it, you know, it mixes it up a little bit. Personal taste at the end of the day. Um, these I don't really worry about because I haven't got many themes running for this, it's just the actual general theme. But it's up to you if you want your themes added in. And this one is remove text field info. Okay, so what I'm doing the ticking is the little tag on the end telling me what country it's from. I'm going to remove that because I don't care what country it's from. I just want to play the game at the end of the day. I want to know what it's on about. And sometimes when you've got longer titled games, it can start looking a bit jumbled with all the information in there. I just want to know basically the, the year it was made, just out of shits and giggles. I want to know who made it because it looks nice and I want to know the title of the game title of the game will be in bold and the other two will be smaller fonts anyway so it doesn't make any difference and that is that bit set up video I don't want to worry about that it does point to the wrong direction at this moment in time but I don't need to mess around with it because it's working I know it's working because it just showed me the video so I'm not gonna piss around with that at this time being sound I fucking hate the sound that comes as default there's a little clicky game effects thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn those off and I just want to keep the wheel click so basically as I'm scrolling through the games all it does is click it doesn't scream down my ears with stupid sound effects because although yeah it sounds cool at the beginning it does your head in when you're searching through hundreds of games so I'm just going to keep the clicks special art as we talked about on previous videos I put the 360 um, button layout with all my themes uh, that's the one that we added with the special art A1 and B1. So if you did that and you got 360, uh, follow these settings and you will have the same as me when once I show you in a second. So get rid of this, um, get rid of that, get rid of that. So you should only have B enabled, all the rest not ticked. Um, X, just follow these settings. I've explained it on previous videos. Have a look at those, especially uh, Hyperlodge and the hyperspin setups. Um, have a look at these videos if you don't know what I'm talking about here, but follow these settings and you'll be good. So 500 in that one. In this one I want 384. In this one I want 1. In that one I want 1. And these should both be 3. At the bottom here, it should already be set this, this as default, so I want type fade and start none. If you've got all those settings as it is, it should look nice, hopefully, when I boot this up. So, again, you don't need to press anything to save any of these options, it should do automatically when I choose a different option within the actual Hyper HQ. So if I just exit out of here, everything that I've just changed should be saved. <laughs> Cross fingers. Right, so now... Let's go back to Hyperspin and see if those made the changes that I want. So, D Drive, Hyperspin, load me up. Now it should look good. All that's going. I've got no video for that one yet. It's probably not got to that stage. My internet is terrible, so it's probably still downloading those games. Um, let's load up. A. As you can see, it's making its way f from A to B, downloading all the videos for them. I've got the um, pop ups at the bottom. Let me. Um, I'll put it on this one so it's not got a video, so I'm not going to interrupt you. Um, yep. So as you can see, at this moment in time, I've got the pop-up at the bottom, so it's showing my 360 layout, whatever button you press on there will do that in Hyperspin. It's got the box out there, I've got the cartridges, I've got the videos that are downloaded at this moment in time, so apart from the actual text that's in the um, video itself, I'm good to go. However, have a look at my tips and tricks video, and that will change. You can change that into whatever colour you want. So now what I'm going to focus on is the fade. 
Right, let's get out of here. Get out. Don't want you in my life anymore. Let's do fade. So, fade, fade, fade. Media. Okay. So, as you can see, here's our hyperspin setup. I go into media. I then go into fade. And as you can see, I've not got much set up there at all, apart from the default and the main. So what I want to do is, I want to go over to our Sega Genesis download. Hopefully I've included this, Sega Genesis, yep. So all I need to do here is, drag the fade folder that I've supplied with you to the fade folder in the media within your hyperspin setup. So hopefully that should go and it should be pretty quick anyway. So now when I go into here, you should also have a Sega Genesis setup. As default, that's what it will load. So we'll see this in a second. And if any of these games load, you can have these yourself, I'll show you in another tutorial sometime. Uh, if any of these games load, it will give these kind of backgrounds, in other words a more stylish background for each game. So it's good to do it for more popular games but it's up to you at the end of the day. Okay, so that should be the fade setup. So now let's have a look, see what it loads like. So go back to our Hyper Launch HQ. Let's have a look at a game. And now when I press it, hopefully it should give a more stylized version of the fade. So click on that. Loading See, game. I've got the background. I've Loading got, complete. I've got all the information and there's the game loaded. So I'll exit out of that because it's quite loud. But it's still not good because I don't want to see the bar going across. I don't need that because I know it's only a, a cartridge so I don't want to see how long it takes. I know it's going to be almost instantaneous. So I'm going to take all that information away from it. So modules, where do I go for this? Let's have a look settings it will be running fade general uh, I've got it all as global um, appearance so first off we want to take the bar off so 7 zip progress what I want to do is make sure I'm in the Sega Genesis pane when I go to settings and then when I choose the fade progress tab now where it says show fade 7 zip progress no I don't want to see that so I want that to be false so basically I don't want to see how long it's taking to decompress the zip file or 7-zip file because it's tiny you know I don't need that information it's just clogging up the screen and it looks untidy so I think that should do it I also need to change the animation type to uh, image so use global I think it will be image and bar However, because I don't want the bar, because I don't need that information, I'm just going to take it off. So now it should just say loading. That's it. And there should be no bar there clogging all the information up. Um, and that's that. So now when I click on it, click on a game, it should take the bar off and it should look a bit more presentable. Loading game. Loading go. complete. Nice. Nice. And that's how I want it. Right, so now we've done the actual hyperspin setup, we've done the fade, now what we want to be looking at is the bezel. I like using bezels. It's a widescreen uh, setup and the, as default the screen will be 4 by 3 So I've got lots of black bars, it's a little bit misshaped and things look a lot smoother and stuff like that when you've got a bezel. So I'm gonna, I've am gonna, i included one of my bezels for this system. Uh, you can use whatever bezels you want. Have a look on the Hyperspin forums. There's loads of downloads. Go to the FTPs uh, in the bezel folders, and you can choose from hundreds, basically, if not thousands, of bezels. But I've included the one that I like. Uh, it's actually the one I made, which is absolutely amazing. It's probably the best bezel that ever lived. Uh, so all we need to do for this one is actually go to bezels, and there it is, made by me. So, what we want to do is tell Hyperspin basically that we want to use it, but first of all we need to put it in the actual bezel folder. So again, we've gone into our, let's get back up to where you can see it. 
Okay, media or D drive, um, hyperspin folder or wherever your hyperspin setup is, go to media and within the media folder you will have a bezels folder. Uh, as standard you've already got these already in there but we haven't got anything for Genesis so what we want to do is tell it that we need stuff. So I've given you a folder here with the Genesis setup so all you need to do is basically get to the media folder within your hyperspin setup get to this folder drag that over so bezels overwrites bezels so now in there I should have Sega Genesis there we go now what I would need to do is tell hyperspin to actually use those bezels so now I'm going to go into settings bezel enable bezel yes true now that's it basically hopefully now when I load it it should load with a bezel I may need to do some tinkering to get the bezel um, orientated correctly but it should be good to go I think let's have a try let's give this a go And there we go. Loading load game. game. Loading complete. Now it should load with a bezel. Boom. There we go. So as you can see now, it looks <laughs> good. This might be a little loud. I'm just going to load the actual game, get through all these screens. So I can see that it's censored. So what I've done now is I've pressed F1. F1, because we're using RetroWatch, will open up this menu. As we can see, we've got the lovely bezel that I made. Uh, you can choose whatever bezel you want, but RetroWatch is very nice because what it does is whatever bezel you use, you can tailor fit it. So basically, all you need to do is when you've loaded up the system, press F1. It brings you to this menu. As you can see, the game's in the background, so it's good to judge. Take yourself over to settings, press X. All this is explained in the RetroArch tutorial, but I'm just going to do it again quickly just to show you how easy it is. Uh, we've got the bezel enabled, so now we need to go to video options, press X again, press X on custom ratio, and that now lets us move the screen around. So what I want to do is I want to line up the edges of this with the edges of the bezel. Overlap it slightly. Yeah, be aware that the for some reason the Mega Drive it has like a border, even though it's the edge of the screen. Sometimes you get like a border on some games, so you may have to do a bit of tinkering to get it the way you like it, so it fills the actual bezel for every game. Uh, you'll understand that as you start playing the games with the system. Okay, so I've done the left hand side and I've done the top. Now what I need to do is press X again, and that will let me do the right hand side and the bottom. So now stretch this all the way over to the edge of the other side of the bezel. Nice. And then down to the bottom. So now what I've done is I've filled the screen with the bezel and the screen. So I've got no uh, gaps, everything's taken and it blends quite well. So now that fits. What I need to do now is exit out of here but I don't press escape. Do not press escape. What I need to do is save these settings. As we talked about with the RetroArch configs, I need to save it as a config. So every time from now on, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get it set up uh, first, but once it's done, I, I've got no chance of accidentally overwriting this or changing anything by accident. Whenever it loads, it's going to load exactly the same every time. So now what I'll do is press Z, that brings me out of, oh sorry, no, don't press Z yet, press X, and there we go. That's basically took us to the end of resizing our screen. Now I'll press Z. Uh, go all the way back to the beginning of all this and around here you will have save new configs so press X on this and there we go it said it saved the new config and it's put it in the config folder however what we now need to do is press escape out of here because we don't need this anymore yep there's the exit screen okay so now Minimize this, go to your emulator folder, and there is the RetroArch one. Now in your config folder, 
you will have just made a Genesis uh, file. Genesis plus GX. Basically that's the name of the core that we were just using. What it's done is it's made a config for that core. Now if I was to load it up again it would be exactly the same as it was before I made that setting. Uh, basically because it's using this config here. But what we've just done is we've updated it but when we updated it it saved it as this file format. What I need to do now is change that file name to that to basically Sega Genesis the name of the system for it to use that from now on. Um, if it's not at the top the easiest way to do it is right click on the folder put sort by and date modified so whenever you do save a config it will always appear at the top. It's easy for you to make changes. Okay so what I need to do now is change that name so it doesn't use this anymore. Um, you can just delete it but I don't like to delete I always like to keep the older settings just in case so now I'm going to need that to back up back up press enter so that's that saved now what I want to do is I want to rename the original config that we just saved them copy and it's ignore the retroarch core configs it's always the name of the uh, um, what's it called, the system, which will be a config file and it will be whatever the name of the core is with libretro, or we ever pronounce it in there. So now I want to rename that to Genesis. So press enter and there we go. Now hopefully when I load that system up again now, just to test, it will fit that screen and all the settings that I just made will be saved. So balls 3D. I actually had this game. I think I tied it from the library and never took it back when I was a kid. Loading game. Loading complete. And there we go. Now it should <laughs> fill the screen. There you go. Yeah, so there we go. Now what we've got is our hyperspin, um, our hyperspin setup, set up for Sega Genesis or Mega Drive or whatever it is you call it on your system. Uh, it's a lengthy tutorial, I know, but to be honest, the actual stuff that we've done in there is not that big. What I'm trying to do is talk you through it. I mean, everybody can show you how to do things, but what is want to do is teach you as I go along so yeah it's a bit more lengthy but I want you to understand why we're doing changes rather than just doing the changes so then if you feel more confident and you want to set up more systems on your own or something like that then you actually know why you're doing changes so you can implement those changes on different systems and know why you're doing them and it makes more sense that way um, yeah like I said it was a bit of a lengthy tutorial for such a simple system but I'm going to start smashing these out more regularly now. We've done the more complex setups of the actual emulators themselves. I'm going to show you how to do a few more of the main core systems within the RetroArch setup. Uh, I'll probably show you a few more of the arcade classics and a few more of the arcade setups. And then we're going to go focusing more into the PlayStation 2, the Wii, and the GameCube. So, you know, hopefully by you know this week or whatever you'll have a complete setup and you know people that are just starting to pick up on this now will be able to smash the entire setup of hyperspin in a matter of a well a day if you follow the tutorials one after the other so again enough of my waffling um, my apologies if uh, this is more lengthy than what you want but I just want to teach people who have never touched hyperspin before from the very basics and give you everything that you need for a complete setup. The only thing that's left to do on the setup that we just did then is the actual changing of the fonts within choosing the game. If you are stuck on that one, have a look at my tips and tricks uh, YouTube setting. I'll give the link on the screen now and follow that it'll show you how to change the fonts and the text and a few more bits and tricks if you haven't looked at that video already so remember do not buy hyperspin it's just sold by mugs who 
I don't know, either they're on their ass skin to something, and they sell you absolute shit setups. I mean, this uh, guy who sells it out of the loft, his, <laughs> his setup is made up of widescreen format, uh, normal ratio format, he's got boxes everywhere, they're not resized. He says he's got the complete setup, which isn't because he's got wheels missing everywhere, his boxes are incomplete, they're all the wrong name, he makes art himself, which I wouldn't even wipe my ass with, and he says that it costs hundreds of dollars to actually set it up Hyperspin. No, it does not. It costs you um, two memberships, $30 at um, MU Movies, and I think it's $45 at Hyperspin. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but at the end of the day, you can use your own hard drive that you already got yourself, or you can buy yourself budgeted. And also, once you've done it, you know how to do it. So, as he adds more systems, which are all shit by the way, um, you can't update it because you haven't got the memberships at the places. Uh, so you have to send it back to him, paying for packaging, posting, his admin charges. First of all, it all looks like dog shit anyway, so I wouldn't want it. And then you've got extra charges on top of it, and you don't know what you're doing or what he's doing to your stuff. So, again, just do not buy anything online. It's not worth it, you'll end up with a bag of shit, it'll stop working, you won't know what you're doing. Uh, just follow my tutorials or any tutorials out there. I'm not trying to take your money, I don't get anything for this. I wish it was completely free. But yes, you do have to grin and bear it with the extras. Um, again, I'm waffling on, so if it, I'll try and get another tutorial made today, but if not, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. So, all the best, and have fun with Hyperspin. And remember, just say no to people selling mugs. Laters.